Welcome back to Resident Evil HD on Nintendo Switch. So we're going to do a little bit of backtracking here. So we're going to get rid of this. We're going to take those and... We're going to leave. So I remembered, finally, what you're supposed to do with those crests. If I remembering, if I'm remembering this correctly, because I read up a little bit since the last episode, we should be able to examine the back of these. Yeah, so we should be able to use them once we examine the backs and bring out all of these little, you know, pieces on the back of them. So we are going to hold on. Is this? Yeah, this is this is the way we came in. All right. So we're gonna backtrack. I thought about just starting the episode with us having those pieces and back at that graveyard puzzle, but I thought, you know what? No. Let's do this the legitimate way, and we'll just do it naturally. It'll take a little bit off the beginning of the episode, but what we're going to get from this will be worth it. We'll grab that on the way back. We just gotta go back through this waterfall area, go up the elevator, back out towards Lisa's cabin. And that's it. You know, Looking at stuff like this, especially with the way I grew up, it's just so incredible to be able to play this game on a handheld. Because, you know, when I grew up, when I was in, like, you know, elementary school, maybe later elementary school, I had an NES and an N64. And when I was getting closer to, I think, middle school, maybe a little bit before, my grades started de declining. My parents blamed video games, so I wouldn't be allowed to play video games anymore. So for years, I had to sneak around, buy handhelds, so I could actually play games. Because, like, I bought a PS1 at one point, played some PS1 games there. My parents found it, got rid of it. They used to hide my Game Boy Color, and I would, you know, find it and put it back every once in a while. So I, I kind of, like, transitioned to handhelds, and that's kind of how I became a handheld gamer in the first place. Which led to, you know, why I prefer handhelds and why I cover handhelds now. But, you know, I had a PS1, and I played Resident Evil's 1, 2, and 3 on them. But, you know, I never got a chance to play Code Veronica and stuff until much later on. I was playing handhelds, and like all of my gaming was like Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. And just, so like, being a fan of Resident Evil, I was only able to play certain games. I could only, you know, look up information about games like this, or Zero, or Code Veronica. The list goes on. So being able to actually play them, not only in general, but on a handheld like the Switch, looking this good is just phenomenal. Alright, so let's go ahead and use these. While crows try to peck Chris's eyes out. And we'll solve the puzzle. Yeah, look at that. 100% worth it. Silver Serpent 357 Magnum Revolver. Definitely worth the backtracking. So now let's go back to the guardhouse. But you know, yeah, that's kind of like how gaming was for me as a, you know, elementary school, middle schooler and everything. Because even with Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3, I had very limited exposure to them. Because, like, I got to play... I got to play them a bit on PS1. But it wasn't really until I got my own job in high school that I was able to buy a PS2 and actually, you know, 
have my parents not just take everything away from me. So, you know, RE1, 2, and 3 were kind of fleeting until the Nintendo DS came out. Because I had a Nintendo DS, because like technically in all those years I wasn't allowed to have games. I had a GBA, and my parents found it and got rid of it. And then I bought a GBA SP that they didn't take, they didn't take away. Had a Nintendo DS that I hid from them. Had PSP that I hid from them. So when Resident Evil Deadly Silence came out on the DS, it was like a dream come true for me because I played these, I played Resident Evil 1. I loved, loved it to death. And then, you know, having it on the Nintendo DS as a handheld, you know, I took it to school all the time because I, you know, it was at that point of, well, if my parents find it, they're going to take it away. So if I take it to school with me, they're not going to find it while I'm at school. And just, I just loved playing it over and over and over again. It was so great. Hi, crows. Go away, crows. Don't bother me. We have to go do things now. But that's just kind of like a little bit of history. Because I, th I think I've talked about my handheld gaming history in this series before on the on the Let's Play channel. But it's just something that makes me think of it. Because like, just like looking at this game, watching it go, go at it like on a handheld is just so great. You missed snakes. Just like you did in the original. All right, so we have one space available to be able to grab one of these blue herbs. Let's go back into the save room. You know, it takes seven minutes to just go get the Magnum. We're not gonna keep the Magnum, at least not for right now. That's gonna be a special weapon for like bosses and such. Cause we should, we should still have three or four bosses left at least um first let's get the green herb out i want to combine those into a full heal we're gonna put the magnum away put that away i'll take the blue herb back out can i use the blue herb by itself yes good all right let us begin our trek through the guardhouse All right, we're gonna start with this door. Never mind, it's locked. Door plate reads zero, zero, 001. Well, I guess then we have to start with my least favorite room in the entire game. Well, actually, no, this is the remake. There's another room that I, that I dislike more. Well, let's just move this into place to cover up that hole. Just like you do in the original, so you don't get smacked by a plant. Oh boy, this room. I always hated this room because it's where the spiders show up. But let's just go in and get it over with. There should be a couple spiders in here. Game! Capcom, I hate you so much. That is so much crap. All right, little spider's gonna come out. That is so gross, dude. It's like pulsating as it dies. We know there's another one in here. Where is it? But just like, did you see that? Capcom knew exactly what it was doing. They knew. A red oil lamp, it's not lit. Well, let's light it. You know, doing puzzle stuff while we know there's another spider in here. We'll just take a screenshot of that. 
Let's go find the other spider and kill it. There it is. It's on the wall right there. Come on down here, buddy. Or not, I'll come I'll come to you. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Um Can I shoot it through the through the gate? Yes, I can. <laughs> Look at it fall. Just fall down to the ground. Where is he? Can you not reach me? There he is. Ugh. How dare you spit at me? Am I poisoned? Not anymore! Anyways. Moving onward. You know, the tarantulas actually can spit. I knew someone a long time ago. I think it was from a Resident Evil forum, actually. Who owned a... Uh, who owned tarantulas. Thankfully, never, you know, showed pictures or anything. But apparently, they... Um, their spider spit on them once. And it caused a rash to happen. Like it hissed and like it, they they like they like spit hair and it's real gross. Obviously never looked up a video of it because I do not like spiders. Oh, they give me the willies. Especially tarantulas. Oh my gosh. So I uh, I have I have a bad history with spiders. Spiders have legitimately never really done anything to me. In reality, that is. So, you know, I don't have a reason for having an unnecessarily awful fear of spiders. It's because of my childhood, really. It's a book with a red cover. Nothing is printed on the any of the pages. All right, we'll keep the book for now. What about that? Ooh, a first aid box. Cool. Let's go ahead and open that. Raccoon herb. A mix. Oh, that's neat. But. I am afraid of spiders. Deathly afraid of spiders. Because when I was about four or five years old. I had a nightmare, you know, as, as a small child. And in that nightmare, I was being chased around my house by a normal sized tarantula. It was in the living room where my parents had their big, you know, furniture sized TV. And, you know, I was running circles and it was like running circles behind me. So I was scared. So I ran to my uh, parents' bedroom. At that point, I don't think that it was still following me, but I thought it was. Because I just, I mean, I don't remember that much about the dream. I just like, I have, there are images in my head of the dream that I still remember to this day, you know, 30 some odd years later. And I ran to my parents' bedroom, jumped into their bed, you know, you know, little kid seeking the safety of mom and dad. And at the end of the dream, I realized that the parent who I was hugging for comfort uh, was in fact a giant human sized tarantula. And the, uh, the dream ended as the tarantula's legs moved around my body and it prepared to uh, bite me and as soon as like you know it was about to bite me woke up terrified scarred for life i've been terrified of spiders ever since 
So you know what? Spiders haven't really ever done anything to me personally. Only in my dreams. You know, it's kind of like those uh, those memes you'll see like on uh, TikTok where it'll be like the girlfriend will be mad at the boyfriend because she, dre she dreamt that uh, he cheated on her. You know, like, and they have the cats on there with the cats like smacking and like screaming and so mad about it and the boyfriend has no idea what the problem was because the girlfriend is so upset because in her dream <laughs> the boyfriend uh, was cheating on her. It's kind of like that. Spiders have done literally nothing to me in reality outside of just exist. But thankfully, we won't have to deal with any more of those in this episode, I don't think. I don't think the remake added more spiders. Because in RE1, we had two spiders in here. We had spiders in the Mansion Revisit. And then we had the uh, boss spider when we go towards the underground. Oh my gosh! I forgot! It's a little different here. You're actually supposed to go do this way. Uh, did that hurt a lot? Not really. Yeah, because you're supposed to... Uh, I think you're supposed to put the box there. And then climb over this area. So the plant doesn't feel you against the floor and attack you. Anyways, moving right along. Even though, to be honest, we don't really need... We don't really need the red book yet, do we? Let's go back. Let's waste some time, and we'll go back and put that away. Because I don't... Because I'm pretty sure, at least in the original, there is a room down here that has a bunch of ammo in it that you can pick up. So I want to make sure that we have room for stuff like that. Because there is uh, not, to my knowledge, another save room. In the guardhouse outside of right here. So let's just go ahead and go in here. Drop off the red book because we don't need it yet. The red book, I think, is for the room right outside of this area's boss. And we're probably going to have to come back here anyways because the 001 door is right across from here. So we'll have a key for that. Anyways, moving onward. Apologies if anybody watching is afraid of spiders and you are now freaked out by my, uh, by my, the description of my spider dream. But, you know, that's kind of how it is. All right. Let us move onward. We're going to run into zombies at some point here. Is this thing fully? Yep, it is. The door plate reads gallery. All right, we don't have the gallery key yet. There should be a... Oh, there's no movable statue here. There's a map. Cool. Oh, there's a giant beehive in the hole. Oh, hello, bees. I see you are coming through to attack me. I'm going to run away into this other room. Isn't there something we can do with that hole? I think there is. Bathroom! Chris has got to pee. Nothing? Alright. Ooh, residence key. That's cool. What does it say? Zero, zero, 001. So we can go back to the beginning of the guardhouse now with this. Can we interact with this? No. What the? I wasn't ready! Ugh. Kick his head off! There we go. Now you're not going to come back as a crimson head. Whoa! That did way more damage than I thought it was going to do. I have to use a first aid spray for that. <laughs> oh, just a regular zombie, but that leg grab thing did a ton of damage. Anybody in here? No? Good. 
All right, let's just look to see if there's anything in here that we can... Hold on. I'm trying to think of the right... Yeah, this one all the way to the back, and then like, run over here and turn this one to the left to... That should be like the uh, ladder that goes down to the underground. Yeah. I don't want to run down there yet, just in case 001 door has something we need down there. So let's go back for now. Bees are over here. Go away, bees. I have done nothing to you! Those are real big bees, too. Though I'm not, I'm gonna, not gonna lie, I was gonna do something to them. Cause I'm thinking like you can probably use like a fire based weapon through that hole to like burn the nest. So I was gonna try to use the lighter on the nest. <laughs> Anyways. Room 001. I see movement right there, which I'm assuming is a zombie. zombie popping out of this water, right? Another key. See? Bye. <laughs> Sorry, bud. But you can stay in there. What's moving? Oh, it's a... It's a corpse. That's unsettling. What we got here? All right, clip for the handgun. And another clip for the handgun. And a self-defense gun. With a note. I had to do it. We ran from those things. But Robert started to show the symptoms. I had to do it. So he probably killed Robert. He would have done the same for me if it were the other way around. After I put him out of his misery, I just had to leave him in the bathroom. Now I'm probably the last one. Oh, so that zombie that stood up is Robert. How could this happen? I'll never forgive myself for being a part of this project. Eventually, I'll get what's coming to me. There's no way to escape this nut house. It's just a matter of time now. Everything is said. All I need is a little courage to get it done. Ooh, so the body that's hanging right now is this guy. Does he have a name? But this is better than just waiting to turn into one of them. Linda, please forgive me. Linda. Okay. Linda, I don't want to die. Oh, that's so sad. Let me take a look at this self-defense gun. A self-defense... Oh, it's like a little mini magnum. That's neat. Sorry, my guy. I'm afraid you did not st stop Robert from becoming a zombie. That's really sad. They turned that... Holy crap, you uh, scared me with that hanging body to... Oh... Now I know who it is, and now I feel terrible! Anyways, we're probably gonna put the self-defense gun away. We don't really need it. Self-defense gun, you can go right there. Holy crap. Alright, we got a reload done on the pistol. Let's go ahead and combine that. Oh, good. Handgun ammo's getting up there again. Mixed herbs so we can heal. Let's go ahead and save. Just because. Because I believe there is a boss in the underground area. Well, sort of. 
and I know there's a way to kill it easily. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do it on my first attempt. We'll have to see. But onward! Because I vaguely remember there being a special way you can kill kill this uh, boss or pseudo boss or whatever you want to call it. Okay. Whoa. That was weird. That kind of like... Bees, I'm trying to look at something. Fine. I won't. You know you super bees? I don't know if this will work here. Not necessary to use it. All right, so we cannot use the lighter to light their mess on fire. They are just being rather annoying. They also look like they're about the size of someone's hand, or at least their palm. That's kind of freaky. Oh, is, this, is there, a, there a note right there? Hey, let's read this file. Plant 42 report. Four days have passed since the accident. The plant at point 42 is growing at an amazing rate. Although there are many unknown aspects about this plant, we know that in comparison with the other groups of plants, the T-Virus has had a substantially stronger effect on this one. The T-Virus has drastically morphed its host's anatomy as well as its size, which is kind of a... I feel like that's kind of a trend with pretty much everything in the franchise that gets infected with the T-Virus that is not a human. Like humans... Zombies. Turn into zombies. Probably the same height they were as, you know, humans before they died. But literally everything else. Oh, uh, actually, no. The dogs The dogs aren't... The, the dogs are pretty much normal size, too. But bees, much bigger. Spiders, a whole lot bigger. Snakes, a whole lot bigger. Etc, etc. Anyways... Nowhere on Earth will you find anything like this. We've also found that Plant 42 has two main sources of acquiring its necessary nutrients. One source is through the root. Somehow, it has rooted itself down into the basement. Immediately after the accident, a scientist went mad and destroyed the Aqua Ring! That sounds like a, an elemental attack from a JRPG. Ever since, the basement has been like a pool. There is a high possibility that it's one of the chemicals in the water that is promoting the Plant 42's rapid growth. But we don't know what chemical it is. A bulb-like body of the Plant 42 has been sighted hanging from the ceiling on the first floor. We are sure that it used the air ducts to reach the first floor. Numerous long tentacle-like vines are protruding from the bulb. We believe the vines are the second means of acquiring its nutrients. When the Plant 42 senses prey, it uses the tentacle-like vines to capture them. After doing so, suckers on the vine drain the prey of its blood. That's weird. Like, suckers? Like, um... Like, like the suction cups, like, on an octopus's tentacles? We've also noticed that... We've also noticed that it has some intelligence. When it captures prey, or when it is inactive, the vines twine around the door to stop possible intruders. Interesting. Okay. Anyways, we are going down this way. To where in the original there was a box puzzle. Looks pretty similar to where the area from the original. We got crates. Okay. We got more crates and we got water. Yep. The same puzzle as before. But we do have... But we have a door here. This room wasn't there before. Locked from the other side. Okay. So let's go ahead and push this. The crates look different before. In the original game, 
the crates had the umbrella logo on them. Or well, it wasn't really a logo. It had the letters UMB on the side of them to to, to kind of like sing, sing, symbolize that they were from Umbrella. So let's get this crate here. And let's get the other one. Oh my gosh, they made this they made this puzzle so much easier. Because, like, in the original, instead of being on the left side of this, the crate was on the right. So to be able to push it actually in the, into the uh, area, you actually had to push it all the way back here, come around here, push it against this wall, and then push it all the way back. So they kind of, like, halved what you have to do for this last crate in the remake. That is a nice little touch. Same puzzle, but they kind of gave threw you a bone there and made it slightly easier. Okay, so push you forward and we'll be able to go down to the next area. Sploosh! And we have a bridge. I've got a couple extra slots. I guess we could take that with us, just in case. And water! Ooh, nice big metal gates. Why are you taking a long time to load? Oh, we got a cinematic, that's why. Richard! Richard, what are you doing here? Chris! Yes? Chris, stop! No! Richard, no! Richard. Man, Richard got done dirty in Chris's campaign. Like, seriously. Oh, look at the big ones over there. Man, Chris. Man, Richard got done dirty, man. At least in Jill's campaign, Richard comes in and helps you fight the snake in that first battle. What's that? Oh, is this Plant 42's root? Ooh, that looks gross. But yeah, in Jill's campaign... Richard at least helps Jill fight the snake, so he gets to do something instead of literally just survive to just die. Man, that sucks. Poor Richard. Hold on. Turn around. Go this way. Go up this way. Oh, cool. The control room key. That's really unfortunate, man. That's awful. Poor Richard. Is there anything we can interact with right here? The warning lamp in case there's an emergency. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and climb down here. Oh, I remember this. I think the big shark like knocks against the window or something. An error message, something appears to have gone wrong while the water is being drained. Um, what happened? Emergency, emergency. Unknown source of pressure detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. Okay. Let's go try to fix the pressure. There's no need to adjust the pressure right now. I feel like there is. Thirty percent of pressure threshold. Uh oh. Uh oh. Reaching 
50% of pressure threshold. Activate emergency drainage system immediately. Where's the safety at? Hold on. Oh, oh, it's up here. It's up here. It's up here. It's up here. Hurry, Chris. Of pressure, pressure. Hurry. What? Chris. Reaching 90% oh, no. Oh, no. We're going to die. What the heck, dude? Safety lock. Reaching ninety five per cent of pressure threshold. All personnel prepare for impact. Oh, no, we're almost there. Let's try it again. <laughs> Let's try it again. Do we have the control room key? Yes, we do. Okay, good. Then we don't have to redo much. We just have to go back down there and do it properly this time. Okay, let's go back down there and we're going to do it the correct way. <laughs> Stupid game. It's like you need to go over here in this room, then over here, then over here, then over here. But that was my fault. I forgot exactly what you're supposed to do in there. But it's fine. We only have to redo a couple rooms. So it's 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 fine. We'll just have to redo this bridge block puzzle. I can't believe that. I didn't die to combat like I did to that Crimson Head a few episodes ago. Nope, I died to a timer. <laughs> Because we spent over like, what, like over half of that time before I even found the emergency shut off valve. So as long as, I mean, we, we know what we're doing now. We know what we're doing, so it should be fine now. We just got to get back there. All right, Chris, go ahead and push that. Man, we have to go watch Richard die again. He didn't even get to help you fight the shark. Just boom, dead. 
But you know, we can just pretend that this is not the canonical route. Because I mean, technically speaking, there is no canonical route in the games. But if you want to, you know, headcanon it, technically the Jill sandwich line from the Jill campaign is referenced in Resident Evil Revelations 2, which makes that, at least that event, canon to the series. So it's like, good, good. I did not want to watch Richard die again. We're going to have to take the long way around. Go away, you stupid sharks. Excuse me, sir. I am trying to run away. And I do understand that you're in the water. And obviously, you're much faster in the water than I am running in water. All right. And we're back. So we just got to do this properly while Jaws, or I think he's called Neptune in this game, decides to be a jerk and attack the window. Drain the water. No, I won't let you. And the game freezes again, right there. Emergency. Emergency. Unknown source of pressure detected. Locking all doors to achieve maximum safety. All right. Safety lock. Uh, then we go over here for the lever. Pressure threshold. Restore oh pressure. We have to hit number one back here. Chris? Chris! <laughs> Reaching 50% of pressure threshold. Activate emergency drainage system immediately. Do we have to hit the safety again? Knock it off, you stupid shark. There we go. Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. So you obviously, you guys can't see it. But the moment that those went down and probably cut off a lot of the, the lighting in this room that Chris is in, my smart lights went off because it's 2 a.m. right now and my lights went off. Because <laughs> this is normally when I go to bed when I uh, have to work the next day. I don't have to work tomorrow. Oh, that's so funny. All right. Um, let's go ahead and use this because one of those sharks did bite me. And we're about to get more herb stuff anyways. Examine. Uh, an herb mix of two green herbs was inside. Oh, that's cool. And now we can come through here. And you know what? I'm going to leave the lights out. Because it's better to play a horror game with the lights out, right? Right. That's how I always play Silent Hill games. Ever since I rented Silent Hill for the PS2 way back when. Magnum rounds, cool. I, um... I rented Silent Hill 2 back on the PS2, and I remember playing it at night with the lights out, and it horrified me. All right. We got some stuff we can drop off at the box. 
And we're at the 45 minute mark anyway, so let's go ahead and head back so we can conclude this episode. And so we don't have to risk repeating that stupid water pressure thing again. Almost back. We're gonna just get over here. Head back into our save room. We didn't use up any ammo at all in that run. Oh my gosh, we have so much. We have we do, we have so much everything. Oh, uh, we'll take out the unprinted book. And the improvements. So let's go ahead and save our progress. There we go. And we'll continue this next time on Resident Evil HD on Nintendo Switch.